So hello and welcome to your block schedule info session. My name is Katie Escalera. My pronouns are she, her, and I am an academic advisor in the Mustang Success Center. Um, this presentation is being recorded and will be posted to our website and our YouTube page in case you would like to rewatch it at your convenience. We do have, again, a QR code with our pre-survey to kind of just test your knowledge on the registration tools. This does help us plan for future workshops. Um, just answer the questions as best as you can. It's Again, it's anonymous. It's not going to count against you in any way. Um, and then again, for those of you just joining, we do have um, another advisor here to answer questions. So you can use the Q&A feature at the bottom to ask any clarifying questions along the way. Um, please use it for general questions. We can't answer specific questions only pertaining to you. So for questions regarding like a specific department, such as housing, dining, financial aid, um, please reach directly out to them. And then again, if your question only pertains to you, maybe like with specific transfer credit, test scores, that kind of stuff, you might want to meet with an advisor one-on-one -on -one so they can pull up your account. Um, but only use the Q&A function. Don't use the chat um, to ask any questions because our advisor will be only checking the Q&A function. Um, but please feel free to ask questions again if you have any that come up during this presentation. Okay, so um, some questions you might be thinking are like, why is this class on my block schedule? How can I make changes to my block schedule? Um, your block schedule was finalized on August 7th at 5 p.m. So you now do have your finalized schedule for fall quarter. Today, we will be reviewing the basics of your block schedule, um, taking a look at how your classes are degree applicable using your degree progress report and your curriculum sheet. Also discussing and looking at um, how you might consider making changes to your fall, fall block schedule. Um, so the first portion is going to be a little bit of review from slow days, which should be helpful to those of you that attended, you know, earlier in the summer in early July. Um, those of you that just attended, stick with us for the first part. I know it might be like a really um, like review that you just went over. Um, but the second part is going to be on how to make actual changes to your schedule. Um, this presentation is also intended for you to follow along using the portal. So I'm going to do my best to pace myself throughout the presentation so that you can follow along if you're wanting to. Um, and remember, you can access this video and more on our YouTube page later as needed. So let's get started with a quick review of your block schedule. Um, so you can access the portal by going to my.calpoly.edu, and I'll give you a few moments to pull up your Cal Poly portal for those of you that are wanting to follow along. Um, so again, we are on the portal. This is what the portal homepage looks like. So my.calpoly.edu. Um, your block schedule, again, is now fully finalized and available to view in your student center. So we're going to start by going to your portal homepage, and then we're going to click on student center, which is located under my apps on the left column. On the left hand side, you'll want to click on my schedule. So again, we're on the portal, we're under Student Center, and this is the homepage for Student Center here, and then we're going to click on My Schedule on the left-hand side. When you click on that, a page like this will come up. This page will show you which courses you have been block scheduled into. So here you can see more details of the class you are enrolled in, including the name of the course, the course description, the professor, the days and times of the course, the location of the class, and how many units the class is. Um, you can also click on the calendar view in the upper right so that you can see um, what your schedule will look like weekly. So up at the top there, I highlighted it. You can click on that calendar view. Again, if you're like me and you need to see like what your week will look like, just a good visual view of that, um, you'll want to use the calendar to see the days and times the classes will break down. So once you click the calendar view, 
you want to make sure you click week up at the top under time period. And then this um, will show you which courses you've been blocked scheduled into as a weekly calendar view. So first time freshmen are enrolled into a full schedule for fall quarter, which we, re we refer to as a block schedule. Your block schedule may consist of major courses, support courses, and GE courses. Um, your courses were selected based on any transfer credit, as well as your declared majors flow chart and your responses to the admissions survey. All right, so we reviewed the basics of our block schedule and where to access it. Now you might be wondering, how do I know if these classes apply to my degree? or how can I find degree applicable courses to swap with? Um, maybe how can I double check I'm not enrolled in something I might already have credit for? So once again, you've opened up Student Center. Um, we're gonna click on Academic Progress from the tools on the left, and then we're gonna click on Degree Progress Report. And I'm gonna pause here again for those of you following along. We are back on Student Center, and then we are going to click on Academic Progress on the left, and then we're gonna click on Degree Progress Report. And this is gonna open up your DPR, also known as your Degree Progress Report. Um, your DPR is specified to you and your current completion of classes, including your transfer credit and your major specific requirements. Um, you can find all the components of your DPR here. Um, we are going to focus though on the general education requirements. So we're clicking on that highlighted area um, on the screen. And then once we click up that, this is gonna pop up. Um, so if we click on um, GE Rex, it's going to pull up the G requirements on the right side. This mimics what you see on your curriculum sheet. So you'll see GE area A, B, C, all the way through G GE area F and your GE electives. If we go back to our DPR and click on GE area A, we can see some requirements that are in progress or not yet satisfied. So a green checkbox with satisfied designates that the requirement has been satisfied. So as we can see here, the A2 that has been satisfied, again, it's gonna look different on your screen because this is specific to your um, transfer credit, what you've completed, all that. So if you have transfer credit like this student, their A2 has been marked um, satisfied. If they were wanting to know what courses they took or what course they took to satisfy that requirement, they can click on view courses on the right hand side. Um, what you're seeing for A1 is says satisfied in progress. So this student has been blocked into a course for fall quarter that is going to satisfy their A1. So you will see all your fall block um, schedule classes marked as satisfied IP. Um, because they are in progress for fall quarter. And then this student has not yet completed their A3, which is why it is marked as not satisfied. And then if you want to compare your degree progress report against your curriculum sheet to see kind of how all this fits together, you can access your curriculum sheet on your portal underneath the academics tab. And then you can also always access your curriculum sheet on flowcharts.calpoly.edu. Um, so again, I'll pause here for those of you wanting to follow along. Um, if you want to go back to your portal, and then once you're on your portal, you'll click on the academics tab, and then you'll click on your curriculum sheet that is listed under your catalog. So if you did decide to use flowcharts.calpoly.edu, um, the other way to pull up your curriculum sheet, you'll want to select your catalog year, which is 2022 to 2026, your major and your concentration or option applicable for your major. Um, at this point, many of you will not have a, select, a selection for your concentration yet, so you can select non-concentration option. Um, as shown on the screen, your curriculum sheet is a snapshot of the requirements of your major. So you'll notice that the curriculum sheet is divided into three big areas. 
The first area is your major courses. Again, these are core courses directly related to your area of study, typically offered through your department of your major. The second big area are your support courses. Um, we see these from different disciplines in this section because support courses help supplement or provide foundational understanding for your major courses. And then the last big area um, is your general education courses. So you can see the six GE categories on this side of the page. Um, one thing to also note about this section is the gray boxes. So for GE areas where there are four units listed, you'll be able to choose a course to fulfill this requirement. For GE areas where there's zero units and it's grayed out, that GE area is already being fulfilled by a requirement in your major um, or support courses. So for example, we see the D2 listed here under general education courses. It says lower division D, four units in support. And we see that grayed out box with a zero in it. This means that this class is double counting in your support courses. So if we go down to your support courses, we see support 222, macroeconomics D2. Um, so that is a GE class, but it's also double counting as one of your support courses. And then to access your flowchart, one of the other tools that we use when planning registration, um, you'll go to your portal on the academics tab and click on flowchart. So it's right above your curriculum sheet. Um, again, on the homepage of the portal, you'll click on academics and then it'll be listed right above the curriculum sheet. And again, you can also access it on flowcharts.calpoly.edu and then just um, put in the information of the catalog and your major. And a flowchart is going to help you plan when to take classes. So the curriculum sheet is kind of like, what classes do I need to, do, um, to take to complete my degree? And the flowchart is kind of to help you plan when to take those classes. Um, so this is just an example of one way to complete your degree. So you do not have to follow it exactly. Um, it is just kind of a recommendation of when to plan to take classes. But again, you don't have to follow it exactly. It also assumes students are not coming in with AP credits or transfer credits. So that's why it's always important to use it with your curriculum sheet and your degree progress report. So using the legend um, will allow you to read each class's specific information. So let's take a look at an example first. Um, we have our course title, our course prefix, the course number, and the prerequisites, which is what credit you need to have fulfilled before taking the class. This um, example does not have a GE indicator, which means this is not a GE class. However, with this other example, we will see that it is a GE before. So this example has an asterisk also for the prerequisite, which means that it uh, the prerequisite is too long to put in the box and you'll have to refer to the course description or the catalog um, of, to see what exactly the prerequisites are. And then as you can see highlighted down here, there are some boxes that extend over multiple quarters. Um, this means that the class is suggested to take in one of these quarters, but you do not have to take it multiple quarters. You only have to take it once. So as you can see in the highlighted area, we have an A3 course. They are recommending to take it sometime between um, your winter quarter of your freshman year into your winter quarter of your sophomore year. Again, you only have to take it once. That's when they suggest it, but sometimes depending on transfer credit, it, you might take it earlier than that. And then you want to use both your flowchart um, with your curriculum sheet. So planning classes um, using both tools, because for example, the flowchart does not explain which GE to take. They just kind of put a G in, GE in there as a placeholder. Um, and some of your Gs double fulfill and will show up on the flowchart as a support or major course first. So again, look at that example of the D2. Um, again, it's important to use both of these tools together. Okay, so now before we go into making changes, we need to check when you're able to make changes. So the first important thing is where to access your enrollment appointment. So again, now we are back on Student Center. So I will pause for a quick sec. Um, if you are on the portal and you go to Student Center on the left-hand um, side under My Apps, 
This will come up and we are going to click on the enrollment tab on the left. And once you click on the enrollment tab, you'll find enrollment dates. Um, and this is going to tell us when you can go in and make changes to your block schedule. So again, student center, enrollment, and then enrollment dates. And then once we click enrollment dates, this is going to pop up here. Um, so at Cal Poly, every student receives an enrollment appointment, and this is not a physical appointment. So this just means that the registration system is going to unlock for you during this time that's highlighted um, so that you can make necessary changes to your schedule. So these appointments are your personalized dates and times when you'll be able to make changes. Um, and it's in concluding when you can add, swap, drop, or even add yourself to a wait list. You can prep the changes um, in advance, but you can't officially do anything until this time and date um, opens up for you. So your round one enrollment appointment will start somewhere between August 13th through August 15th. And round one will stay open through the end of the day on August 15th. So you essentially have until midnight on the 15th to make any changes. So when you click this, you might see your enrollment appointment is August 14th at 2 p.m. That means on the 14th at 2 p.m., you can log into your student center um, and you can start making changes to your schedule. And then you can do so through the 15th at midnight. Um, but as a reminder, you can't make any changes again until that um, time and day starts. So I just wanna do a quick poll here to see um, how we are understanding enrollment appointment just to see if I need to re-explain anything, um, maybe clarify it as well. Okay, so it looks like there might be a few of you still a little confused on what enrollment appointments are. Um, so again, it's not a physical appointment. This is just the day and time where you can start making changes to your fall block schedule. Um, so again, if I am a first year student and I look at my enrollment appointment time and day and it's August 14th at 2 p.m., that means I can log in at August or on August 14th at 2 p.m. and I can go into the registration system and I can change around my schedule if I need to or want to. Um, and yeah, again, it'll stay open until the 15th at midnight. So now that we've reviewed your block schedule and you can look to see how classes apply to your degree, let's discuss making changes. Um, so our typical recommendation is to not make any changes if you don't have to. Um, classes are very full this quarter. However, you may need to, or you might just decide you do want to make changes. Um, so today we're going to cover when to talk to an advisor first about the change, how to use Schedule Builder, which is our registration tool to make those changes, um, and kind of go over some potential reasons to maybe be a little cautious when making changes. Um, but making changes could include a number of different actions. Maybe if you're wanting to change a section of a course because maybe you don't like the time or the modality or the location. Um, so let's see, you might get blocked into a class that is online, but you're like, no, I really want to be in person. You can switch it for another section of that class if they are offering it in person. So that could be um, just making a little swap there for a different section of a class. Um, maybe you're wanting to swap a GE out for the same GE, but a different class. Um, or maybe you're just wanting to change up your schedule entirely. Um, so also maybe you've looked and seen that you have transfer credit that might got sent late and you were blocked into something you already have credit for. So all of those are reasons why you might want to change around your schedule. So you do want to use your curriculum sheet and your flow chart to kind of look at what other classes you're eligible to take. Those are going to be really great tools to see like which ones you might want to swap your current classes for. 
Um, and then you also might be only blocked into 12 units and you might be wanting to take 16 units for fall quarter, which is about the average um, students take per quarter to stay on track. So now we're gonna go into our registration tool. Um, and this is a tutorial on how to use Schedule Builder, how to search for classes, how to swap classes, and how to really use the tool to kind of um, navigate the registration system. Welcome to your Schedule Builder tutorial. First, we're going to start off in the Cal Poly portal where you can access your student center. And within student center, Schedule Builder is housed under the enrollment drop down with the shopping cart icon on the left side of the screen. Here we can click on Schedule Builder and this will open up the tool we are going to be demonstrating for you today. Before we continue, make sure you have selected the correct term for classes you are searching for. Schedule Builder always defaults to the current active term, so change this option if you are looking for classes next quarter. Now, if you have enrolled classes, such as a full or partial block schedule, you can import your courses on the upper right side by choosing this dropdown and then choosing Enroll. Schedule Builder is a tool that will allow you to search and find courses, build possible schedules, and enroll in classes. When you're working with partial block schedule, such as the example on the screen with Bio 150 and WG2S145, you can add classes and build around the existing block schedule, or you can start from scratch if you don't have any enrolled classes. Um, the great thing about Schedule Builder is it allows you to add and swap courses as needed. So I want to show you the filters option. This is the best way to get started with your searching. If you do not see the filters already populated on your schedule builder, there is a button right next to import courses that says expand filters, and that will bring them into view for you. There's a lot of ways we can use these tools. Um, the closer that we get to the end of round one, the less filters we do encourage just to make your time a little bit easier, but I'd like to show you what filters you have available. You have the opportunity to add in time that you're unavailable. This is great if you have a job or other um, unflexible time commitments in your schedule. You can label them and then add in the time that you're unavailable. You can also request a minimum break time. If you do not like going the class back to back, you can add in small break time. Again, uh, the more filters you use, the less options that will be available to you during the search. We have global filter options. Um, typically, you're only going to see regular academic session, excluding the summer. You, summer has um, separate terms that students can register under. Class status, where you can show open classes only or waitlisted classes only. And this indicates that the class is full and that a waitlist is in existence. You can also search by modality of instruction. So if you prefer in-person courses only, you can filter it out that way. If you're okay with hybrid courses, both in-person and synchronous, you can select those and that will filter your options down. Now the four most common filters are going to be a last four here. Under section filters, we have the area where you can filter down by key area. So in this case, if I'm looking for a C1 GED, I can select my GE area C, and then to the right, select my specific sub area. If I am on the 22 to 26 catalog, I need to make sure that I'm choosing a C1 from the 2020-21 or later catalog to ensure that I'm looking at the correct classes. What that will do is it will filter down my course subject options only showing me courses or subjects that are that fulfill C1 requirements. Um, if I click on architecture or art for short, and then the catalog number, there's one class under the architecture subject that fulfills C1 classes. When you are looking for a course specific, specifically, you can just use the subject dropdown and you will see all the subjects offered here at Cal Poly. You can click on the subject and then the catalog numbers will show up here. 
once you choose a course, it will populate the course description so you can read it. Um, the nice thing about this option, if there are prerequisites for the course, it will populate here as well. Now let's do an example and say that I'm looking for an A1 World Communications GE class that is open. I'm going to select the open filter. I'm going to use my GE area, GE area A, and then sub area A1 under the 21 or later catalog. That is going to give me two subject areas, communication and honor. I am not in honor college, so I will be selecting communication. And there are two classes under this filter. So two courses right now that are fulfilling A1. If I click on 101, I can read the course description. I see there are no prereqs needed. If I click on number 102, I can also see course description and no prerequisites needed. If there were no open available, it would show an error and be able to show you the course number. But in this case, it looks like there are open seats available in this person. So I'm going to click Add Course. To maximize my options, I may add both courses down to my shopping cart, which now populate down here. To look further to see what sections are actually open, I'm going to select the first class, Palms 101, and then choose Select Sections. This is showing me every section of Palms 101 that's being taught at Cal Poly for fall quarter. Um, and the sections are divided into these rows. We have section 5, 21, 32, and I can scroll on to see more. Now, since we selected the filter to only show open classes, it is only showing us the open sections here. And I can read that under the column, unreserved seats open. You can see there's one available seat out of 24, one available seat out of 22, so on and so forth. At certain points of registration, you will see some seats are reserved under this reserved seats open category. When you are looking at that, you can read the class notes and see some seats are reserved for new freshmen, and it will tell you who the population is. It may be for a specific major, it may be for um, freshmen or transfer students, you'll have to dive into that. When the seats are reserved for multiple populations, you can click open the class notes, scroll down and see how they break down in this availability box here. We're currently in open enrollment, and so there are no reserved seats impacting our ability to register. Now, what I can do is I can leave all four of these sections open since I know, or selected. I can leave all four of these sections selected, and I can allow Schedule Builder to do the work on my behalf, working around my existing enrolled classes to see how all four of these may or may not fit in my existing schedule. I can do that, again, by leaving them checked and click OK. Since I have options in Palms 101, I'm going to unselect Palms 102, and I'm going to click the Build Schedule option. And what this is going to do is show me how my enrolled Bio 150, my enrolled WGQS 145 work with those four Palms 101 options. All right, so it shows you that at least some of those Palms 101 sections work with my existing schedule. Uh, in the middle of the screen here, I can see this list, one and two. It means two sections of comms work with my existing classes. I can see a preview here, public speaking comms 101, the Tuesday, Thursday class. If I'm interested in knowing more details, I can click on the class to see who the instructor is, and what room or modality the class is in. I can click on number two and see the other option and how that looks in my shopping cart specifically. And again, Palms 101, public speaking, if I click on it, you can see this is an in-person class as well. This is great news for me. Um, this would bring me up to 12 units, which is full time. But I think in this case, I would like to take 16 units or four classes. So I'm gonna head back to my Schedule Builder homepage. I'm gonna leave Palms 102 in here just in case I need it to explore this option in the future. And I'm going to click on expand filters and explore some other options. 
All right, so I know another class that I need is social intent. So I'm going to search for an open section of social intent by choosing the open option, clearing the GED, and then typing in the subject option SOC for sociology, and then from the catalog number, oh no, one pen is not showing up here, which means that unfortunately one pen is either not being offered this quarter or full. So I'm going to open up my searching options by clearing the open class status and trying to search again, just in case it's being offered this quarter. And look at that, it sure is. So I'm going to click on Social Intent and add the course down here to my shopping cart. And I'm going to click on Select Sections to see what my odds are and make what the class sections look like. In this case, I can see there are two sections being offered. Both have 120 seats in total. Zero are available, and since it is open enrollment, there's zero reserve seats available as well. The next column we're looking at is the wait list open. This shows the number of seats available for the wait list and how many of those seats are taken. So there are currently six students that are on the wait list for section one of Social 110. And for section two, there are four people on the wait list. Now, since they're both 120 seats, I may consider that pretty good odds of getting off the wait list. I want to shoot my shot and go ahead and wait list one of these sections. So I'm going to leave both of them selected since they're pretty similar in wait list number. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to make sure that I have my two enrolled classes, bio and WSGQS, as well as the comms class I'm clicking to add and the social class I'm clicking to wait list. I'm going to click build schedule. And that's going to show me again how those four com sections we picked earlier and those two waitlisted sociology sections work with my enrolled classes. And if I see here in the middle of the page, it looks like there's four options in total. So there's a Monday, Wednesday sociology section with a Monday or Tuesday, Thursday com. I can potentially take sociology on Tuesday, Thursday with that Tuesday, Thursday comms as well looks like um, a little bit earlier time with social on Monday and Wednesday and Tuesday and Thursday for calm or again both on Tuesday and Thursday with different time options. I took time to see upwards of a hundred different schedule options and when that happens you can utilize your filters from the first step to whittle down and narrow down the options. You can also choose by short sort type to show you the earliest average start time if you're a little bit more of an early bird. If you want to look at the least day schedule to really maximize um, your free time or free days, you can do it that way. I think I prefer the latest average start time, so I'm going to reselect the latest and then go back to the first schedule. And I think that's really nice, but I'm curious where my bio and WGQS Courses are located so I can find a good option where to spend my time all the day on Monday and Wednesday. And I can do that by selecting these three little dots and choosing view on map. And then I can select both my bio and WGQS course and click view on map. This gives me a nice view of campus and I can see what the distance is and then make a determination of whether or not I want to head back my dorm room or if I want to find a nice location on campus to hang out in between classes. And I can view that on different days. All right, since I'm feeling pretty good about this schedule, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I can click the little heart button up in the upper left side and then choose to name the schedule. So this is my late start schedule. And I really like it, so I'm going to give it an exclamation point and click confirm. But I know that I may want to waitlist both sections of sociology since they are waitlisted. So I'm going to favorite this second one as well by clicking on that part. And then I'm going to name it backup option. Confirm. Now in the future, if I come back to Schedule Builder, in the upper right side, the Favorites button will always appear, and I can click it to choose my, my class option that I want to try to enroll in, either by clicking View or the three little dots and adding it straight to my cart in order to enroll. 
But at this point, it is my current enrollment time, so I'm going to go ahead and try to enroll in new classes by clicking the Enroll button. I'm going to select both Kongs and Sociology. And I just want to double check and make sure that I'm not going to have any issues enrolling due to prerequisites or anything. So I'm going to click on the Validate option. And this is going to give me some results. It looks like both are okay to add and validation is complete with no errors, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward and click Enroll. Now, in this case, we always have to set up our enrollment options, and there are quite a few options that I do want to cover. So I'm going to open up Comms 101. We know that this class has open seats and I'll be able to add the class that I want to. But if I was looking to swap this class in for another enrolled class, I would choose, I would click on waitlisted classes full, and from the drop drop down, I would choose the class I was looking to swap it with. So maybe I'm looking to exchange my WGQS class in place of comms. In this case, I'm not. I'm just hoping to add the class. So I'm going to leave the study fast standard and keep the same. With sociology, I do know that this class is waitlisted. And so under my enrollment options, I'm going to have to choose waitlisted classes full. Otherwise, the system is going to give me an error. So I'm going to choose waitlisted classes full and click save. From here, I'm going to click enroll and I'm going to receive this enrollment message. So it's important to read your enrollment messages and then as long as you agree, you choose I agree and then select enroll. So now that we've gone over the registration tools, let's do just another quick check-in. If you're able to, please scan the QR code. Um, it's going to be the same questions as before, um, but we just want to see like if it has helped improve um, learning about the registration tools since we went over all of them. Um, so again, I'll just give you a quick minute um, if you can scan the QR code. And again, this won't count against you or anything. It's completely anonymous. But it does really help us um, plan these workshops to see if um, we need to improve with teaching students the registration tools. And while you still are, are working on that, which is totally fine, um, I'm kind of going to just go over some reasons of like when to contact us at the Mustang Success Center. Um, so here are some examples of when to email us. Um, typically, if it is a quick question, feel free to email us. Maybe you're just thinking of exchanging one GE um, class for another. Um, maybe you already have credit for a class and you just want to double check um, your block schedule and everything, um, or maybe you just want, you know, another opinion on your choice um, for ch uh, changing your schedule. Um, but if there's like bigger things, more complicated questions, you'll definitely want to utilize our drop in hours. Um, so maybe you need to make some significant changes to your schedule. Um, maybe you're even planning on changing your major. I know that's such a hot topic with first year students. Um, so if you are planning to change your major, um, you know, we do typically recommend you staying in your block schedule or looking at classes that overlap for both your intended major and your current major, just because we don't want you falling behind in your current major. Um, but you can come talk to us about that. Also, maybe you're wanting to repeat um, a class you already have credit for. Um, also come talk to us about that because we can kind of go over options and what might be best for you um, for your fall schedule. And then at the Mustang Success Center, we have a set of first year student learning outcomes that help you understand what you can expect to learn from us um, this year. So by the end of your first year, we want you to be able to know how the advising structure works here at Cal Poly, identify resources that pertain to your circumstances in your first year, navigate the registration tools and enrollment process, interpret policies um, that relate to your academic journey as well. And then um, as you may have already heard, Cal Poly will be switching from a quarter system, which is three quarters per year, to a semester system, which is two semesters per year in fall of 2026. 
So what this means is that you will complete your first two years on the quarter system and then switch to semesters for your third year and beyond. Um, but despite the switch, your graduation timeline will remain the same. The university is committed to making sure this does not impact your um, timeline to complete your degree. Um, and then there will be more details coming um, closer as we get to fall of 2026. But right now there is nothing you need to do, um, but we will provide more details as we, we get more details ourselves and as it gets closer to fall of 2026. And then the first year advising canvas is where you can find information about the most common topics that first year students ask academic advisors about. So if you've not done so yet, please accept your invitation. It was sent to your Cal Poly email. Um, this has information about changing your major, registration tips. Maybe you're thinking about adding a minor. Um, it's always good to check here first. Um, and then if you still can't find your answer or you need more information, then you can come and visit us um, during drop-in hours. And then last year during block schedule registration, our wait times did reach up to over an hour long. Um, this year we are anticipating about the same. So if you need to meet with us and it's not a time sensitive question, um, you can definitely email us or come back after August 15th when our wait times will be closer to about 15 minutes. Um, if you do need to visit us during round one, so between August 13th through the 15th, um, just plan accordingly, like anticipate about an hour or more long wait. Um, also, please come during your round one enrollment date and time. Um, we can plan ahead, but seats will continue to change by the hour. So if it is during your enrollment time, um, so again, I'll use the example of August 14th at 2 p.m. If that's your time and you come in around 2 p.m., we can help you actually make the changes. But if you come in before that, we can't do too much. Um, we also can't change your schedule. We can only kind of give you advice on when your time comes up. And then wrapping up now, let's discuss what we covered in today's session. So we took a look at the portal. This is where you can um, find all your academic info. We discussed your class schedule, where to find it, um, how to look at the days, times, professors, all that. Um, we reviewed the registration tools. Again, these are great ways to plan what classes you might want to take for this quarter if you're wanting to switch your class schedule or for future quarters as well. Um, your enrollment appointment, again, that's found under Student Center. And this is the time and day specific to you that the registration system will unlock and allow you to make any changes to your schedule. And then we also explored Schedule Builder, which is our primary registration tool. And this is where you can view class sections and also add or swap um, classes. And then just as a thank you um, again for attending this workshop, we also have a QR code here, which is going to pull up all of our Schedule Builder um, tutorials. So we do have a playlist. We have that main one we just went over, but if you're just wanting to watch a couple quick ones on like just swapping a class or searching for a GE, we have shorter ones too. Um, I highly recommend just getting familiar with the registration tool. That way you'll be more comfortable when you go in and make changes to your class schedule and it'll help you for future quarters when you do have to register on your own. Um, so again, we will have a recording of this workshop, which will be available to watch on our website. If you have questions, feel free to keep submitting them via the Q&A feature. Otherwise, you can email us or come into our virtual drop-in hours. Um, but that's it for us today. Thank you again for coming to this workshop, and I hope you have a great day and a, um, enjoy the rest of your summer. We'll see you in fall time.